My name is Joey Killingsworth, and the band name is Josephus and the George Jonestown Massacre from Memphis, Tennessee, established in 2005. I was writing some songs. I got a bad review at work, and I wrote a song called Quitting Time about my boss, and that started getting radio play on a local radio station for like seven weeks in a row, and uh, after that, I decided I needed to get a band together, and then just basically started just booking shows and our first show was with Shooter Jennings, and then I think our second or third was Reverend Horton Heath. Then kind of started just branching out, going out of town, and then just started writing and recording. And just repeating the process. This is where anybody works for a complete motherfucker. This song is called Quitting Time. You telling me what to do, so I got two words. Fuck you. Think that just about says it all. Think I represent a whole lot of people out there. Don't need to be dead. That fair share. Kiss my ass, kiss my grits. Audio, you son of a bitch. Think it's time I say goodbye. Bye, motherfucker. I fill in on guitar with Black Oak, Arkansas and help promote them and do the booking for them and it started doing shows with them guys and they became our buds and next thing I know Jim's asking me to learn to sit, learn to sit and then next thing I know I did like eight shows in a row with them guys so whenever they need me I just go out in town with them and my whole rhythm section is played in Black Oak at one time or another now and we're real good buds with those guys and now we're doing the tribute album to Black Oak, all Black Oak songs, and got guests like Jeff Clayton, Greg Ginn, uh, CT from Wake, uh, Jimbo Mathis, Mickey Raphael, Wino from St. Vitus, a whole list of characters. So that's going to be pretty awesome. And especially getting Greg Ginn and Ricky Lee from Black Oak together on Electricity Came to Arkansas. That's just insane. That it, it just blows my mind. It, it, it's like, wow, okay, that, that's happening. My dad started out, uh, not started out, but he joined with Eddie Bond, the Rockabilly legend, in 65. So he's he was with him, the Eddie quit touring, and was on the Eddie Bond show and all that for years. And my dad's 73, and he still plays every Friday, Saturday night. So he, he actually plays more shows than I do. Thank you. I'm going to change it up again. That's what we do. This little song, Glenn Danzig wrote for Johnny Cash. We're going to do it our way, called 13.
And we're like, what? He broke his foot off in his boot. He was sitting over here with his motorcycle and his boot with his foot in it was over here. Speaking of weird, here's a little song about Willie Nelson. This motherfucker all Bloody Mary Morning. rockers and metalheads playing old style country folk music and we're doing it well really well and it, it's really cool to be a part of that
Johnson, 37 years old. Uh, Fritz, uh, 36. We live in Watauga, Texas, just uh, northeast of uh, Fort Worth. Well, even if there's just one person in the bar, you know, that's like digging it, or just one person all together, <laughs> that happens too. It's way better than just playing the same old places back home over and over again. So it's yeah, the road's humbling. Yeah. Basically, you go home, you know, when you're at home and you've been in a band for, you know, a few years, you got a good falling at home, but you realize you ain't nothing until you've been on the road and realize no one's hurting you. <laughs> so, you know, being on the road is actually real humbling because you, you go out there, you know, and, you know, some nights are good nights, some nights are bad nights, but you just you take each one with a grain of salt and have fun with it. Our goal each night is to sell $100 of merch. We sell $100 of merch, that gets us down to the next show. If we sell $200 of merch, we think about getting a hotel. So that's kind of how that's kind of how we work Shall it, we? you know. <laughs> uh, the people we met on the road, or, or a lot of people we play, got to play shows with, have become inf you know our influences too, like Bob Wayne, uh, Jamie I mean, Beverly, Jamie Beverly, James Honeycutt, all these guys. Influence, you know, the whole, a whole bunch of people, you know, anti scene. Uh, anti -scene. And uh, when it gets back to when we first started doing it, I guess you could say it was more the old school guys like Hank Williams Sr., uh, Merle Haggard, Waylon Jennings, the, uh, the older stuff, you know, never been into the new style of country music, whatever they call it, but contemporary stuff. Uh, We've always been like an old soul, I guess. We got a lot of metal influences too. Yeah, a lot of metal influences. <laughs> no. Early metal Sabbath. heads. <laughs> Pantera. He's an old no. metal head. I'm still a young metal head. Back home, everybody calls us metal necks. You know, because we throw a lot of. We got a lot of metal influences. We threw wrote some tributes to Pantera. You know, that's basically our hometown. Growing up with those guys, so. Had to write a tribute song for that, you know. Yeah, those guys, of course, big influence. Pantera, lyrically, musically, insp inspirationally, and everything else. That was that's probably one of the one of our favorite bands of all time, as far as the metal genre goes. Yeah. Uh, our our uh, our peers have always told us to just keep doing what we're doing, so. We've always just kind of stuck with that, even when we've been like, well, maybe that would take us to another level, or what, you know, that those questions always pop up in your head. It's like, we could, how much further could we take it, and, and stuff, and, and we've always come back to just me and him. It just feels right, it sounds right to us, and, and our fans don't seem to mind, so it's kind of, it's easier just me and him on the road, for one. A lot less people to deal with, you know. <laughs> More people, money in your pocket. People tell us all the time, you guys are lucky. You're just dealing with your, each other. There's not nine of you or five of you. Isn't 
next song right here goes out to anybody. I know there's some of you out there. Any of y'all that's ever been locked up for some shit you didn't do? Well, this one goes out to you, because hell, I did it! Drink that whiskey for you! Oh, 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 oh,
Um, my name is James Honeycutt, and I live in Port Orchard, Washington, uh, Washington State, about an hour west of Seattle. Uh, born and raised in that area, and um, first started playing music uh, when I was 11 or 12 years old, and a uh, total metalhead. Um, and uh, when I, I became like a full-time musician in 2007. That's when I finally left my job um, to do this all the time. Um, I think it, I knew that that's what I wanted to do with my life when I was younger. I just didn't really know how to go about doing it and was kind of, uh, I think like a lot of people too, it's intimidating, you know, especially if you do have a job um, and you're making you know, a decent wage. You have a family too, like I have a son too, so that was a big, I probably would have hit the road um, full time sooner, you know, if, had I not had a child. Um, but uh, he just turned 20, so I can, I can, uh, that's part of the reason I've been touring when I did leave my job in 2007 because he wasn't a real, you know, little anymore. If I was gone for periods of time, it wouldn't have been as det detrimental to him or me, um, and it's hard to do. Um, not that the parental responsibility goes away, but it's definitely, um, easier to do you know he's he's an adult now and can can uh, do stuff if dad's not around and plus just coming out of his teenage years too you know probably doesn't want dad around some of the time anyway he wants to do his own thing you know so it uh um worked has worked out well that way um we're in the middle of a tour right now touring with uh jake Orvis and the broken band who i also play guitar with and the goddamn gallows this next one's a happy little ditty about cheating and murder. It's called Too Late to Pray.
it's kind of ironic to me because um, five or ten years ago, um, I definitely come from a metal and punk background mainly. Um, I've played in you know some different styles of music um, in addition to that, but uh, I've kind of become kind of like a singer-songwriter folk artist, I think, is how I would best describe what I'm doing, which is really ironic and kind of, I get a kick out of that because uh, when I was younger, if someone would have told me that, I would have laughed or, or, or gotten all, I'm, I'm a metalhead, I'm punk rock, that'll never happen, you know, but uh, it's definitely uh, evolved into that. Um, and as far as it um, evolving, f you know, past that, uh, I'm really happy where I'm at right now. I've never been happier as a songwriter and, and doing what I'm doing, creating music, because all of those influences are really, uh, um, t to a greater degree, um, mixing together and working together in a way that they hadn't previously. You guys mind if I play a waltz? I love waltzes. It's a real creepy evil waltz, so <laughs> there's another new one. This is called Dying Healer Waltz. I, I've become more aware that um, that I am able to and, and sometimes do have a positive effect on other people doing this. So I'm inspired on a different level. Um, 
I don't know, like there's more, uh, trying to find the words, um, like it's, it's just, it's bigger than it used to be to me and not in a bigger, like a success type bigger, but just the impact of it that, you know, realizing that there are people all over the world that are listening to what we're doing and that are touched or moved or inspired by that isn't an in turn touching and inspiring to me. So, um, I just hope to continue doing what I'm doing as long as I can and do it as well as I can. And beyond that, uh, ultimately have as positive of an impact as I can, like on the world around me, you know, I think that, um, and hopefully that, you know, more of us will be inspired to do the same with our lives. You know, I, I think that, uh, we all kind of get tricked into, uh, um, believing that we don't, um, that we don't have as much power over our own lives as we actually do. You know, at the end of the day, like as individuals, no one has more power or influence over our own individual lives than we do as individuals. Um, you know, I just hope to see more and more of that, more and more people waking up to that and uh, making their lives the way they want them, you know, making themselves happy and in turn making the world better too. I know I'm going way off on <laughs> One, two, three, four. Give me gray skies, give me thunderbolts and lightning. Give me 30 days in jail over fussing and fighting. Losing on the track, I ain't never coming back. And my head is from insane, feeling good pain. Give me broken down on road signs, another size of bubble pop. Black shades coming, I don't ever want to die. There's enough of it here, someday we'll all be dead. We're all on this long and winding road. My head's still burning from a girl that put my soul. It's a place for shape, but I gotta keep on moving and testing my fate. There's folks all around me, and tell me that they all we lay. So won't you give me gray skies, throw the boats and I give me 30 days in jail over for sea and fight. Use the wrong track, I ain't never coming back. And my end is pumping steam, feeling good, man. Get me broken down the road, times another size of hope about the black shapes coming out. I never wanna die. There's never over here, so they will all be dead. Secrets in a pocket pussy on the side. Whoops. Give me gray skies, throw the boats and I give me 30 days of jail, little fussy and a fight. Use them on the track, I ain't never coming back. Got me in this bubble steam, feeling good, me. Get me broken down the road, sounds another size of bubble pot of black sheep's coming out. I never want to die. It's never up ahead, someday we'll all be dead. Live slow. Days in jail, I'm fussy and fine. Using one track, I ain't never coming back. And my head is bumping, staying, feeling that mean. Get the broken out of road times. Another slice of hope about the black sheep's coming out. I never want to die. There's enough of me here, someday we'll all be dead. There's enough of me here, someday we'll all be dead. All right. Well, since this is a, you know, this is Alabama, and as James said earlier, we're all pretty much big fans of Hank Williams. So we're going to do a Hank Williams song, God damn it. This one's called Kalijah. Yeah. And this will be on the new album that is coming out in the next couple of weeks. So, Yep, and while, while you're at it, just so I could just do a little plug real quick, our label, Farmageddon Records, the host of this entire family, is all right here. There's some free CDs that we're all giving away. Um, so just kind of an introduction to a lot of the bands that we're, uh, that we're all kind of family with. And there's a big festival that happens near Montana. All these guys are going to be there, so stop by that booth, say hi to Darren over there, and Red over there, and Johnny, whenever he shows up. Um, hey, there he is, all right. Here's, here's, a, here's an old Hank Williams song. Why 
Cause it was a wooden Indian standing by the door Fell in love with an Indian maiden over in the antique store Elijah Stood there and never let it show So she could never answer yes or no he always wore his Sunday feathers and held his tiny heart. Made him wore her bees and braids up and soon they talked. Elijah, she stood on her knee in the show of sign. Cause his heart was made of mighty pine. Poor old Galadriel, he never got a kiss. Poor old Galadriel, he don't know what he missed. This is red, and I do that poor wooden head. Sit on an Indian maiden with a cold black hair Elijah Stood there and never let it show She could never answer yes or no Then one day a wealthy customer bought that Indian maid Took her all so far away and poor Elijah stayed Elijah to serve and it was so sad Cause his heart was made of naughty pie Poor old Glider, he never got a kiss Poor old Glider, he don't know what he missed Is it any wonder that his face is red Glider, that poor old head Songs about Jesus, y'all motherfucker need them. You motherfucker need Jesus. With a handy, I will get wings. We get a good place, come up, come up, come up, and you run up, come up, and I think I know things. You motherfucker need Jesus. Would you keep your mind on close? Jesus, would you keep your mind closed? The fire. 
influences. We don't only draw from yesterdays, you know. We draw from whatever influences are in front of us, and then we try and put it in this simple thing that everyone can understand in front of us in the moment, and, you know. And that's all we got, and that's I hopefully that's all we'll need. But we'll need, you never know. Might need more. Oh, didn't see you there. It is I, TV's Avery of the Goddamn Gallows. Where are we up? Uh, uh, presently, we're at Young Avenue Deli in Memphis, Tennessee. And uh, we've been on the road for two weeks now. We just played Maxine's in Hot Springs, Arkansas last night, and uh, the night before we were in Austin, and then previously San Antonio, Dallas, wait, San Antonio, Houston, New Orleans, the Lundy Gras, uh, B -b 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 Valdosta, Georgia, and then around Florida for a hot minute. And um, <clears throat> we're all very sick right now, and uh, Courtney and I just beat the shit out of each other a couple days ago, but but we're fine. Everyone's okay. And um, this is sweet tea. Yeah, huh? Yep. Yes. Yeah, that's all true. You're good. Yes. Yeah, we were in Nashville. We recorded with um. Andy Gibson, a very nice fellow. Yeah. Anyway, nice guy. We recorded for about a week. Uh, well, I guess it all started three weeks ago. We all met up in Detroit. We all had a few uh, song ideas and so forth. And uh, we met up in Courtney's house and put everything together, practiced for a week, um, and drove down to Nashville, recorded with Andy Gibson. He's a very nice man. Uh, yes, and soon the album will be released. But we don't know when. Well, I live in, well, we all live in separate places. I live in Virginia. Um, Joe lives in Iowa with his girlfriend, Red. Uh, Courtney lives up in Detroit. Mikey lives in Chicago. Uriah lives in Lansing. And uh, Jake lives in Pittsburgh. But unfortunately, Jake is going on to pursue other endeavors. So it's just going to be a five piece. Man. Well, I guess um, Mikey the guitar player, Courtney the bass player, and Uriah the drummer all knew of each other, so to speak, growing up in Lansing, Michigan, and uh, pursuing various nefarious activities. Uh, they all met one night at some flop house. Or, I don't know, some gangbanger. Or I think I think Uriah beat the shit out of this kid. Then he came back with a bunch of other kids and beat up. Started to beat up Mikey, and then Courtney jumped in. Got a big scar on his face and all. But anyway, that's how they met each other. And, uh, Courtney split for Portland. Uh, Mikey followed after him. And that's when the band, I guess, originally started as the Gallows. They had a, another drummer. And then they moved down to L.A., the drummer didn't follow, so it was still just Mikey and Courtney, and they got Uriah to come from North Carolina, where he was tattooing, all the way to L.A. Uh, to live on the streets and uh, try to get the band together. And gradually, they just started touring more and more. Uh, about a year later, I met him in North Carolina, and again in Missouri, where I was living. And uh, they called me up and like, "Hey, you want to come on tour and play the washboard for us?" And I had just gotten evicted. So, I said, why the heck not? Uh, <clears throat> and then a little while later, I guess, um, we toured pretty consistently that, I mean, for those years. I don't recall ever really stopping. Uh, we, we would stop occasionally up in Detroit to, uh, you know, print some merch or make necessary repairs to whatever vehicle we had at the time. And uh, Jake Orvis, who was torn in a band called 357 String Band 
had just recently been kicked out. Uh, so we accepted him into our bosom, sort of the human flotsam of folk music. Yeah, oh yeah, uh, let's see. Tomorrow, St. Louis, today is Memphis, tomorrow St. Louis, then we have a day off, we're gonna go to our manager's place, Johnny Verplank, in uh, Jeff City, and relax for a day. Then we're gonna play Columbia, Missouri, and then I think uh, Springfield, Illinois, then Lombard, which is right outside of Chicago, then Detroit, then Grand Rapids, and then I go home. Back to Virginia. <laughs> Probably the most frequently asked question that we receive, uh, and we've been classified by others as all sorts of uh, colorful monikers like uh, hobo core or gypsy punk or gypsy punk core hobo slash neo crap, but uh, we're really just. What we tell people, the easiest way to explain it, I think, is a mix between punk rock and bluegrass. Because we have uh, a lot of instruments consistent with bluegrass, a banjo and upright bass and so forth, but uh, most of our common roots are in punk rock.
Yeah, well, you got a lot of delinquents around that like to break windows and stuff. A lot of thieves, too. Yeah, well, they got a lot of thieves, too. Yes, they like to pick up extra live wires and wires that ain't so live and pick up uh, stuff like that. They like to spray paint the outside because they're wanting to take up artistry. And they start out with graffiti. And, uh, yeah, they move up that. north and where the train parks because they just mm -hmm. mighty find graffiti up there. They do. They do on the tracks. Oh, works the train. Yeah. What it is, they need something to occupy them and the, the young'uns from the hatcheries and all don't have something good to occupy them other than ball and that's just for a season and then they got the other seasons that they're not occupied doing nothing and they don't wash dishes no more, they don't mow their own yard no more, they don't put a garden out, they don't can no vegetables or anything like that, they don't possum hunt, don't coon hunt, they need something to occupy their mind. It's uh, too far from the walk over yonder to the river and fish and uh, of course they claim that some of the fish is not good in the river over there but I like all them fish you know I like carp and cornbread myself I, I can lick my chops and I got that you know so they need something to occupy them they don't like to walk that far to fish where are you calling from South Harmon all right well Heidi all right, if I can. About the hound dog. I do have one about that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, do you want to hear that about the hound dog? Okay. Okay, now, uh, unless there's anything else, he's going to mash the button and cut you off. Listen on the radio. And thank you so much for calling. This is for, uh, tell us your name now. Margaret and Jack. Okay. And thanks for calling. I rushed home from work like I always do. I couldn't watch football for fussing with you. You left my trailer, my whole life has changed. My hound dog answers when I call your name. Oh, the old sound of my dog having driving me insane. Just like him, you're out there proud. My dog answered when I called your name. Oh! I love my old beagle. We both hunt and fish. When we're finished eating, he cleans every dish. My beagle's my best friend. He's all When I called your name Oh, the low sound of my dog howling It's driving me insane I hear you do it again <laughs> Just like him, you're out there prowling My hound dog ain't you When I called your name My hound dog when I called your name. Oh, yeah. oh, 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 oh. That was for Miss Margaret and Mr. Jack from now, South what, Harmon. What are you going to do when they call you and it's not on your playlist? Well, we'll just have to learn the song and put them off a day or two or three and go do research on it. Right. I'm the hog man. Jerry Isham, and uh, I sing and play music. I write music and I write lyrics, and I do it so far for a hobby. I enjoy doing it, 
and uh, I'm a member of the Knoxville Songwriters now. I've been 21 years. Of course, I belong to NSAI for a while in Nashville and the Tennessee Songwriters, but mostly a Knoxville Songwriter. And uh, I do what I do for a hobby so far, and I am available to open for somebody important. My name is Jerry Isham, the Hogman. And thank you for listening. Uh, just uh, hillbilly trash. Just some to do some parodies, and I do some original stuff that I wrote. It's just nothing that uh, I guess nothing that's really got a lot of attention yet. Uh, had a few things uh, on uh, ooh, on the internet, a few of them, but not that many. Um, I just do what I enjoy doing. So, classified, traditional, country, comedy, I guess. That's the drummer I hear. Oh, I learned three chords uh, back uh, in the late 50s, but um, played and sung some uh, in the early 60s uh, in clubs and things like that when I was in the Navy in California and the Philippines and also Hawaii and places like that, uh, but then I really, when I quit work, which I used to run my own boat business, I also used to work at a paper mill in Harriman, Tennessee, and after that, um, I've just been picked up music full time for a hobby, which is 21 years or something like that ago. So I've been on it 21 years now, basically. Do it for the fun of it. I've uh, seen a few places, probably 40 states by the time that I was um, 21 years old, possibly. And I've seen several countries, such as Mexico, of course, and Canada. And I've been to uh, St. Lawrence Island, Alaska, through the Alaskan uh, Aleutian Island chain. Been to Hiroshima, Kagoshima, Nagasaki, Osaki, Kobe, Yakushka in Japan, and the Philippines. Been to Hong Kong three or four times. South China Sea. Been to Okinawa. Been oh, to Guam. And a few other little places I can't remember. But I've uh, hitchhiked several times from the East Tennessee area to the California area several times. Back before that um, hitchhiking became unpopular. You know, a few people messed it up for everybody. Because you used to could wear a uniform and get a ride almost anywhere. Because back at that time, while people appreciated um, the servicemen, uh, because they remember World War II was uh, embedded in their mind and the Korean conflict, which was a war, for the ones that wasn't there, it wasn't no war, but it was for the ones that was there. They call it a conflict if you ain't been there. But uh, that was before the Vietnam era, and uh, of course I was supposedly helped start Vietnam uh, conflict over there. I was on an um, oil tanker, the USS Shimong AO-30, and then I was on a heavy cruiser, the USS Rochester CA-124, and I was on a submarine tender, the Peleus, USS Peleus AS-1 submarine tender. And then I was at Monterey, California for a year, and of course the Peleus mostly was tied up at Vallejo, California, at Mar Island Naval Shipyard. But uh, I did hitchhike several times across the country and got hops from Air Force planes. And a lot of nice people picked me up, and I still appreciate it. And remember a bunch of them, people picking me up. Well, so many people has helped so many people up that you can't go out and legitimately hitchhike because the law would pick you up now, but they used to, did not look at you and did not harass you if you was hitchhiking and they sure wouldn't hitchhike or wouldn't harass you if you was in a uniform. But there's a lot of people robbed so many people over the years that they just want nobody hardly pick up a hitchhiker. Of 
course, we could get deeper into it than that, but we won't. Did you have enough to eat? Plenty of coffee? We got a high dollar individual. <laughs> right. Nothing like Hillshire Farm sausage. Are we? Ladies and gentlemen, the fifth annual talent show. And up is our mayor of the Fleetorium in at Green Acres Flea Market. The hog man, the mayor of Green Air. Big hand. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hey. Thank you so much. And howdy, everybody. Howdy, howdy, howdy. Our PIG is four years old. Smart little man. No, we spell out words we don't want him to understand. Like H A M or C H I T L I N C, the words we're hiding from him now rips a heart right out of me. That B U T C H E R will be coming today. Our B A B Y P I G will be called away. He'll find he's going bye-bye He rides in our car Oh, how I wish Peter would stop at B-U-T-C-H-E-R I hear him groan He thinks it's Christmas Or his fifth birthday he thanks me a C O N spells fun or play. I spell out all the hurting words, turn my head when I speak, but I can't spell away this hurt that's dripping down my cheek. That B U T C H E R will be coming today. Our B A B Y P I G will be hauled away. He'll find he's going bye bye, cause he rides in our car. Oh, how I wish Peter would stop at the U T C A G R. Oh, how I wish Peter would stop at the U T C A G R. Thank you so much. Pig song. Slop with a mean sled, he's a getting rich 
least a neighbor said. It wasn't long, lies in luck. I swapped my food stamps for a truck. But what that truck? And I was in class and with the holes I suffered gas. I couldn't stop at a station I stayed broke called the inflation. Got all the slabs from a sawmill. My old truck wouldn't pull the hill. Hitched up a mule, I could hear him yell. Here comes a hog man, let us smell. <clears throat> While well, I loaded up hogs, I headed to town. I had two flats before I turned around. Run out of gas by mama station, without a credit card. What a situation.
with your wilted, tainted deeds And I don't want to hear your screams I damn sure don't want no apologies And all your old fruit has died And you don't deserve a dying bee, no So I'll be the one to set you free Yes, TV's Avery. TV's Avery, DDS. Slayer!